Welcome to TVBS Meeting Room, where we tackle global issues with a view from Taiwan. I'm your host, Wen Chi Yu. Today, we're so pleased to have Minister Sandy Uno, who's the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, with us. Welcome. Thank you, Wen Chi, and it's good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. And to reconnect uh, and happy to share about the uh, progress post pandemic and many of the interesting events that we would be hosting and new destinations that we are promoting beyond Bali. Yes. So, yeah, we want to hear all about it. But first of all, it's an interesting title, Tourism and Creative Economy. What is that? Tourism uh, and Creative Economy is home of the 40 million Indonesians having their livelihood depends on tourism. And there's 13 subsectors from the hotel, restaurant, to cafe, mm -hmm. uh, to the travel agents to the 17 subsectors within the creative economy. This is the culinary, fashion, handicrafts, uh, apps, digital economy, movies, films, music. That's a super interesting it's portfolio a, that you it's have. A, it's a gigantic portfolio, and it's actually one of the fastest uh, growing post-pandemic, uh, and we're re registering the uh, growth at twice uh, the rate that the country, uh, you know, across the sectors is, is having. So it's a tough portfolio in the last two years, but as we handle the pandemic much better, we're seeing very good numbers and we're uh, aiming to create 1.1 million new jobs this year and in 2024, another 4.4 million One new jobs. Point, wow, that's amazing. Um, but how is the last two years like? Tough, because, yeah, very tough, tough, right? Um, in particular, 2020 and 2021, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a very, very tough uh, years. And but Indonesia has reopened. The we book. only reopened six months ago, okay. uh, and we relied on domestic uh, tourist movements, which surprised everybody that the, the domestic uh, market has been strong, and uh, it pretty much... Uh, give the cities such as uh, Yogyakarta, Bandung, uh, still a manageable occupancy rate for hotels. But Bali has been very, very hardly hit because of its reliance on uh, foreign international tourists. tourists. International tourists. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're all coming back. They're coming back, but now we have issues on inflation, yes. high ticket, uh, high airfare prices, yes. and because of the G20, hotels yeah. are uh, readjusting their price, but uh, it's a good problem to have. I think we would yeah. be able to increase the capacity, uh, and I think we are going to a new era of uh, tourism and creative economy that is focused on nature and culture. I want to hear about, all about it because you've been promoting the concept of sustainable tourism, right? So it's no longer just pursuing the number of tourists and high growth and all that. Like, what does that mean? Well, we are trailing behind our neighbors in terms of attracting uh, the number of tourists in the past. And we were focusing more on how to increase quantity-wise. But then we look at uh, the numbers that are coming in, in terms of their length of stay and their impact to local economy. And more importantly, is the impact to the environment, which is, uh, to be honest, when we look at the big data numbers, it's not showing very, very uh, strong uh, performance. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing now is to shift our mindset to focus on quality and sustainability. We want green So you tourism. don't want a lot of backpackers into Well, we, we welcome the backpackers mm -hmm. if they contribute uh, to the mangrove planting, if they contribute to local economies empowerment of the micro, small, medium yeah, enterprises, yeah, if point. they uh, also engage in the tourism that do not uh, uh, generate waste that is not recycled and reused. You want responsible tourism. I want responsible yeah. tourism. They could be backpackers. And I love backpack. I, cre I carry backpack uh, all the time. <laughs> but I, when now, because of we have the carbon yeah. uh, footprint calculator, whenever I arrive back in destinations, I calculate my carbon footprint. I need to plant three, four trees. Mm. If I have the time, I plant it myself. If I don't have the time, I'll uh, donate to the local NGOs to plant it uh, on my behalf. And I can monitor it uh, from digital uh, platform that is now offering this type of uh, 
uh, ecotourism friendly. So we have five uh, pilot projects, uh, areas that are uh, supposed to be the backbone for our net zero strategies. We're very ambitious. Uh, this uh, yeah, I can. I, I'm just hearing so many ideas right now coming out of your <laughs> net zero policy. The Asia 21 type of ideas. <laughs> I, <ranting. know. laughs> I can see that. But tell us, how are you going to manage the next few weeks? I mean, leading up to G20 meetings, it's a very exciting time because. Well, not just the 50,000 people estimated that's coming into Bali, but also, I mean, the whole world is going to watch when you have President of the United States, President of China, and President of Russia all coming together. Um, yeah, big job. How are you going to manage all that? Well, we, um, we have the prelude for the tourism ministerial meetings. Uh, we just concluded uh, two days ago. Uh, we have the same. Uh, Lineup. We have uh, delegations from the U.S., from EU, uh, but also delegations from Russia. So always very, very lively uh, uh, you know, arguments, shows... debates. But we say, hey, Indonesia is a country of 17,000 islands. We have 700 plus ethnicity groups. We have more than 1,000 languages. We manage differences. We manage arguments. If we don't have agreements uh, on certain of the key issues. Let's agree on things that we could agree and move on. Let's have dinner. And uh, hopefully the, the very next day, we could chart in terms of where tourism and creative economy uh, would be heading, which is green tourism. Mm -hmm. So uh, that uh, was adopted, and Bali guidelines was presented. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of the agreements among the G20 countries, what we contribute to the resiliency of the sectors, focusing on women and young generations. Yeah. Yes. It's all and then, music uh, in my ear. And sustainability. Uh, we're committing to our net zero strategies of cutting 50% our carbon emissions by 2035 way ahead of other industries. Yes. And we are going into concrete, actionable items like food loss and food waste. I just saw how people are still going back wasting to the old way of, of yeah. uh, pre-pandemic of wasting food. Mm. Uh, we're now cutting down on food loss and food waste. So major, major initiatives that uh, I, I believe I'm very excited that post G20, uh, we could deliver something concrete, actionable uh, improvements uh, for the post-pandemic uh, recovery. Well, I'm very excited for you as well. Um, you know, as Indonesia welcomes so many tourists back, uh, you know, Taiwanese love visiting Indonesia as well. Uh, so there's that, you know, a lot of Taiwanese can't wait to travel again to Indonesia. Of course, Bali is the top destination. What are the other destinations that you like to promote? We like to promote beyond Bali. Of course, when you're in Singapore, it's the Riau Islands, Batam and Bintan. But then there is the largest uh, volcanic uh, lake, Lake Toba in North Sumatra, mm -hmm. the largest Buddhist temple in Yogyakarta, Borobudur. And I've Frambana. been there. The most amazing place, yes. And the beautiful, pristine beach, uh, uh, beach in Lombok which is adding to sun, sea, and sand, to serenity, spirituality, and sustainability. That's in Lombok, Mandalika. Mm -hmm. And then the large Komodo dragons, uh, the giant lizards. I have lizards. been there, but if you Labuan, believe that Labuan island. Bajo, yes. We are promoting that. And one uh, diving mecca yes. uh, in North Sulawesi, which is yes, called Yes, I have been there too. Yeah. Wow, you've been to all. Yeah, I've been to I've been to Borneo too to see all these you know little. And Borneo is yes, also another uh, destination yeah. that is yeah. now fast uh, yeah. up and uh, up and coming. I am a model tourist to your country because I love all the nature and I, I care about sustainability. We need to engage you more and yeah. uh, well, I'm, help promoting, us, I'm promoting. I'm promoting Indonesia promote and, and help us. Uh, gain better uh, type of tourists yeah, who yeah. care about the environment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last question. Feel free to answer on record or off. Uh, just, you know, Taiwan and Indonesia has a lot of, there are a lot of Indonesian workers in Taiwan. Huge. Yes. And so because of COVID, so they've not been able to travel back and forth. Um, do you think sort of this reopening is going to, help some of the workers coming back going to Taiwan? Like yes, 
Uh, definitely, and we have a long-standing relationship. In fact, uh, I've in my uh, uh, one of my uh, workshops before I uh, joined the ministry and after I become active in the ministry is to work with these migrant workers in Taiwan, uh, whereby they could be um, helping us promoting Indonesian uh, tourism and creative economy products like yes. culinary products to. Yes. To Taiwan, to Taiwan, and they could start small, and then maybe they could start a business. Um, yeah, micro businesses. That micro would be, business. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think with reopening, it's going to help them and improve uh, bilateral relationship uh, in terms of trade uh, and tourism that that we're trying to develop. Well, there's a lot Taiwan and Indonesia can do together. But thank you so much, and I'm so excited for what you're going to accomplish uh, for G20 and beyond. Thank you so much, Reiji, for okay. having me. Okay, thank you. Thank you.